Hello, everybody. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. I'm sure you've heard it before. Um, you know, listen, I'm not trying to tell you what to do. I'm just going to throw out some thoughts, you know, get on your hands and knees and pray. Ask the Lord what you think they should do. This is just some thoughts, okay? Now, um, I better know something about the Bible because I went to Bible college and got a master's degree. I went to secular college, uh, a community college, junior college for two years. Uh, took business and computer science, dual major. Glad I did. I took economics and uh, a few other things, you know, related to business, you know, marketing, those kind of things. And uh, took a lot of other education, too. Um, I, I always liked being, reading and what have you. I really wasn't a, a, a book nerd or anything, but uh, I did enjoy history and what have you. And I've studied a lot of history over the last hundred years, world history and United States history. So, and it all tied together when you discover the key in the Bible. But um, just some thoughts. I'm going to throw these at you, you know, not trying to show you how smart I am because I'm not. I've done so many stupid things in my life. But... Um, some things to consider. If uh, they're having everybody stay at home and very few people are working and businesses are considered non-essential, must be closed. I mean, what happens when a small business is closed for a month or two? You know, a lot of people in this country are living paycheck to paycheck. And, uh, you know, a lot of these small companies, small businesses, they're going to go out of business. And then they're probably going to be gobbled up by the, uh, the big companies. And what's going to happen to the employees? I mean, they're going to be out of work. I mean, unemployment could be, you know, 25, 30% real quick. Um, you know? And then what's all this crud about the, uh, the government? Uh, they're going to print money and do a, a you know a bailout and stimulus. Uh, by the way, if you look at the bailout bill, the stimulus thing that they're the two trillion or whatever it is, uh, <laughs> that money's going for big business. It's going to airlines. That money's going to cruise ship companies. Uh, one of the big cruise lines that's going to get hundreds of millions of dollars is owned by a dual citizen a country in the Middle East, and it's not the Arabs, if you catch my drift. Um, it rhymes with news, um, you know, like a newspaper. Yeah. But, um, yeah, they're just printing money. I mean, you know, it's not like they're handing us silver coins like we used to have when I was a kid. I mean, when I was a kid, a silver dime would buy two large candy bars. Now that candy bar costs like dollar fifty or something. But if they print up two trillion dollars, uh, you got to realize something. Inflation is not the price of goods going up even though that is a symptom. What it is, is the value of the money is going down because they're just printing more money. I mean, let's face it. If you're living in a closed area and there's $100,000 in the whole area, and then all of a sudden they double the money supply and print more money and make it 200000 don't be surprised when, when the price of all goods and services go up by 100%. I mean, that's just the way it works. You know, uh, when they got rid of gold, do you know that in 1928, gold was, an ounce of gold was around $20? Yeah, 
uh, an ounce of gold. What is it now? Like 1500? Um, did the gold go up? No. The dollar went, the value of the dollar went down. And an ounce of silver in, um, from the 1920s to the early 1960s, an ounce of gold was about, I mean, an ounce of silver was about a dollar. So, you know, they're just printing money. Now, the thing is, the value of our money, when they print this $2 trillion, uh, the price of goods is going to go up at least by 10 or 15%. And it's going to stay that way. I mean, I've already noticed that food's shot, uh, shot up. But another thing, too, all these people that think, well, oh, I bought gold and I got silver. Do you know that uh, the government made gold illegal to own in 1934? Oh, yeah. They used to have FBI agents in the banks uh, so that they could keep an eye on you in your safe deposit box that you couldn't hide gold in your safe deposit box. Yeah. Yeah, the land of the free and the home of the brave. And don't think that uh, that they couldn't do it again. Matter of fact, gold was not even legal to own for U.S. citizens until the 70s, where uh, I think it was Nixon made it legal again. I was in high school. Yeah, I'm old. Um, but, uh, you know, things are crazy. I mean... Have you tried to look at uh, to buy some bullets, some ammunition? Everybody sold out. Have you looked into buying seeds? Everybody sold out. They're weeks behind if if they even have it. It's nuts. Uh, you know all this social distancing stuff, and yet you see the president and all his advisors and Congress. They're all sitting next to each other, standing next to each other. They're not doing social distancing. Uh, do they know something that you don't, peasant? You know? But uh, another thing, too, is when you start printing money, um, we learned something when I was in cl class taking economics and business math. Um, they have a thing that's called hyperinflation. Now, when I took economics, they didn't really have a definition for hyperinflation other than the prices of goods would increase by a large amount in a very short period of time. There's no standard definition that I know of, but uh, in Germany, after World War I, um, the Allies that won the war told Germany that they had to pay four times what the country was worth in reparations, well, Germany just printed money. And it got to the point where people were getting paid three times a day so that they could run out and buy stuff before their money was use valueless. It was useless. It became to the point where the farmer said, look, you keep your money and I'm going to keep the wheat. There was a common joke, but it wasn't really a joke and it wasn't funny that in Germany a guy took a wheelbarrow full of paper money and left it by the door of a store. And when he came out, the money was laying there on the sidewalk, but they had stolen the wheelbarrow because that was the most valuable thing. I mean, seriously. Look up hyperinflation. You know, look it up. I mean, it's like hyperinflation, an example would be uh, candy bar would be $1.50 today. Tomorrow it's $5.00. A week later, it's $25. A week after that, it's $50 or $100 or $1,000. They just print money. And if you got money stashed in a safe deposit box or under your mattress or whatever, or in the bank for that matter, guess what? Oh, I got a million dollars in the bank. Well, guess what? If we have hyperinflation for an extended period of time, you might need that to buy a candy bar. And don't think I'm exaggerating. It's happened in the past. So, you know, I don't know what to tell you. 
But we could go into depression, and uh, I'm telling you people, if we go into depression, it's not going to be like the soup lines of the 20s and the 30s. People had respect for each other back then. Uh, churches still, some of them still taught the truth. And people, like I say, they respected each other back then. That's not going to happen today. That's not going to happen. People are, well, let me tell you something. I got into a discussion, kind of an argument with a guy at work. And trust me, sometimes I like to be wrong, but this time I wasn't. I told him that when I was a young, young kid in the early, early 60s, uh, America was a very safe place to live. And guess what? It was. Um, we looked up the crime statistics for 19, I think it was 1960. And there were less murders in the United States for the whole country. Less murders than there were in Chicago alone uh, like a year, last year or the year before that. I think Chicago had like 750 plus murders. And there were less than that for the whole country in like 1960. You can look up the FBI crime statistics. Um, can you imagine that? The whole country had less murders than just Chicago, which is, Chicago is the third largest city in the United States um, after L.A. and New York City. So, and of course he argued and says, well, you know, the population was less. Mm, yeah, you're right. We only had about, I think it was a, about 150 million people in 1960, and now we're like 300 and something million, like 320, 330, maybe 350 million, I don't know. But still, you know, the, the murder statistics didn't just double. I mean, they, they're like 10 times what they were, not including the violent crimes, the rapes. Um, you know, it's just, it's a totally different world. Uh, back in 1960, we still had prayer in public schools. We had Bible reading in Jesus and, you know, Bible readings. Like I said, prayers in Jesus' name in public schools. Where it had been for, you know, hundreds of years. I mean, a lot of people don't know it, but Harvard, Yale, and Princeton were all started as Bible colleges. They're anything but now. Yeah, they're anything but now, especially since Harvard has an elective called uh, anal sex. Can you believe that? A Bible college now has classes on anal sex. Yeah. How to be a sodomite or uh, I don't even like to think about it. But, um, you know, God's judgment is coming upon America. And these church people are going to be your enemy. Um, they tolerate all the things that God calls an abomination, sodomy and abortion. And they think that they're going to fly away out of here any second and be pre-trib raptured out of here and just, you know, go to heaven. And they're going to be having the marriage supper of the Lamb while all these other poor saps are down here getting killed. Uh, in the Great Tribulation. They don't even have a clue that they're going to be the ones that are the object of Satan's wrath. Satan's wrath. Not God's wrath. Satan's wrath. Millions of Christians died in communist Russia in the last, oh, I don't know, 100 years or so. Maybe 103 or 104. Uh, in the Ukraine, there was a thing called Holomodor. I don't know if I'm pronouncing it right, H-O-L-O-M-O-D-O-R. They purposely, Stalin and his communist hordes, uh, purposely starved millions of Christians. Ukraine was the most Christian country in Europe, from what I understand. And they purposely starved them to death. I mean, kicked people out of their homes in the middle of the winter, didn't allow them to take any clothes. I mean, whatever 
night clothes they were wearing probably, but they wouldn't let them take any, um, um, you know, jackets or anything. Just basically kicked them out of their house, you know. Could you survive when it's 10 degrees outside and you got no clothes, no food, no water? That's what they did, people. And uh, they murdered. If you were one of the lucky ones, they put a bullet in your head, I suppose. At least that was quick and less painful than freezing to death and watching your children die in front of you. Uh, and people don't believe in the uh, seed of the fallen angels. Uh, I tell you what. By the time it's all said and done, they're going to believe. You know, all these people that think, well, you know, anybody can be saved. I'll tell you what, that's not what Jesus taught. Jesus told people that they were not of his sheep. Jesus told people that they were of their father, the devil. John 8, 44. John 8, 10. Um... You know, was Jesus calling them names? Was it a figure of speech or was he telling them the truth like he said he was? He says, if I tell you the truth, why don't you believe me? After he called them the children of the devil. Uh, you know, it's, it's going to be rough, people. It's going to be rough. And quite honestly, if we don't have his strength, we're in trouble. Jesus said that we had to endure unto the end. It's, it's not going to be pretty, people. And then uh, after, they, uh, after all this bad stuff happens, uh, I tell you what, their, their Messiah will probably come and promise everybody peace and safety. Just take my 666 mark and uh, peace and safety. And you know what? The great majority of church people, if, if one of these TV preachers on television tells them that uh, it's okay, that it's not the mark of the beast, They'll do it. They'll do it. You know, I've been on YouTube for 10 years trying to warn people. Hardly ever ask for money. I think uh, out of my 800 and something videos, I've asked for maybe a little help for on two or three of them when I was testing the waters to see if I could retire early and go into ministry full time. But, uh, you know... That's less than 1%, people. But, uh, you know, what can I tell you? It's going to be very, very interesting. In Matthew 24, Jesus said, except for the elect's sake, um, well, those, except for those days should be shortened, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. So, I'm sorry I don't have any uplifting message. You know, I've been watching. I mean, I, I've known I would probably have to die for my faith for around 30 years now. And I've been knowing about the, uh, the uh, new world order for uh, since the 80s, probably towards the late 80s. I couldn't give you an exact date, but towards the late 80s. Matter of fact, I discovered it around the time Oliver North uh, did the Iran-Contra thing and was on C-SPAN and admitted on national TV that uh, he traded the Contras guns for drugs, cocaine, and that he sold them on the world market. Well, what country is the world market? Gee, uh, USA, you know, 
And there was nothing in the news. Nothing. I mean, I, I thought I was having a acid flashback or something. I'm kind of kidding around, but, uh, you know, maybe not. But, uh, you know, when it didn't come out on the news, I started investigating who owns the news. And, of course, that led me to the banks. And when I got to the banks, it, the octopus went to pharmaceutical, uh, all kinds of evil things. And I tell you what, that was an that was an eye opener. And that's when I discovered that the octopus always went always all also went to the uh, the religious sector into the churches. So that octopus it's been around for a long, long time. So. People, I don't know what to tell you what to do. Stay close to Jesus. Pray about it. But your gold and silver, stroke of a pen, our buddy, the chump train, who's going to give us chump change. Uh, he, With a stroke of a pen, he can uh, make gold and silver illegal. You'll have to turn it in. And they'll pay you whatever they say. And, um, you know, if you don't know where your future is, it's going to read Revelation chapter 12. And just remember, the woman is going to be the church. And she's going to be give, uh, on the wings of eagles. Read Revelation 12. See what it says. All right, people. Take care, and um, just remember, stay close to Christ. Don't take the mark. And, uh, oh, by the way, one more thing. Don't be surprised if the power goes off. Don't be surprised if the Internet and the telephone system does no longer works. Because if they pull the plug and do something big, they don't want us communicating with each other. And when the internet goes back on, channels like mine are going to be gone. So, but I'm sure, uh, I'm sure people like Alex Jones will still be around. So, what can I tell you? Um, yeah, maybe they'll blame the Iranians or something and then have another war. I don't know. It's, uh, they've been planning this for a long, long time. So, stay close to Jesus, people. Just remember, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. Chaplain Bob, signing off. <laughs>